Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by and welcome to the final part of the end of season updates. Part 7 is the last one, so it includes the last lot of orchids. A um, couple of points. First of all, thank you very much for everybody for their birthday wishes, whether belated or otherwise, doesn't matter. Most appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, and also quite a few people have inquired about the... Um, Dendrobium cross with the pitted leaves. So uh, it did get taken to the Orchid Society and um, caused a debate, shall we say? <laughs> um, basically, oh, let's just have a look. Um, the problem was the pitting on the leaves. Yeah. Um, first of all, the uh, panel was saddened by the fact that it had happened, because they said it was a well-grown plant and otherwise strong and healthy. But unfortunately now, with those marks on the leaves, it's virtually uh, excluded itself from any shows or anything, despite it being a really good plant. Well, I don't grow my plants to put them in shows. I grow them because I like to grow them and for the blooms. If they're okay to go in a show, that's an added little bonus, but that's not why I grow them. But, but many at the Orchid Society do. They always have shows in mind with their plants. They're always making sure things grow straight and leaves are in the right place and things ready for shows. I don't bother so much. <laughs> Basically, the diagnosis was the original problem was biting insects of some sort when the growths were young or maybe when they were older. All the insects are gone, there's no sign of any, so the original cause of the problem has been eradicated. But they've said that the pitting is highly likely to be the result of a secondary fungal or bacterial infection on the damage. Yeah. So the tiny little marks left by what could have just been a day's worth of aphids, you know, and then the aphids were dealt with, um, but whatever, biting insects of some sort. And then an infection's got into those damaged parts of the leaves and caused them to go black and pit. <clears throat> that sounds reasonable. I'll run along with that. Um, but they said as a precautionary measure, I should give it a fungal side spray to make sure that that fungal infection is stopped in its tracks. Well, I believe it already is, because these leaves don't seem to be getting any worse. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> but, um, you know, I'll follow their advice. It'll get a fungal, uh, you know, fungal spray. Unfortunately, it can't have one for a while, because it's just been sprayed with insecticide as part of my routine spray, and I don't want both chemicals in the plant at full strength at the same time. Yeah, so I'll wait for a while. But I'll do it, you know, as a precaution. But uh, yeah, so that's that one done, and um, let's get on with part seven. These are my um, four Arengus, um, three and a half I'll say, rather than four. This is Arengus fastuosa, miniature, doesn't get that big. Two nice new spikes just starting. Always has had a small root system, but some of them are actively growing. It just doesn't get a big root system, but then it's not a big plant. But it's doing okay and two spikes. Oh, that's fastuosa. This is citrata that I virtually lost. The whole plant died. Luckily, just at that point, it was pushing out a little plant at the base. And that's all I've got left now. There are some viable roots in amongst that tangle. And some that ain't so good. But it is growing. That's a long way now from flowering. It was bought in bloom. The fastuosa has bloomed several times. This one's just uh, been in bloom, and it was a first time blooming with three spikes. Okay, two plants, but uh, I must get that spike off, actually, it's finished. But it, it's still green, I'll let it die back naturally. Um, good root system on this one. This is Decariana. Um, plants growing nicely, has lovely mottling on the leaves. And um, very good root system on that one, front and back. Um, and the other one, this is a non-bloomer. Um, probably because it is still quite young. Um, this is Mr. Sidii, and um, again, nice plant, growing well, good roots, and several plantlets pushing out sideways, so it's forming a clump. Um, 
How long that's going to be before it blooms, I haven't got a clue. But when it does, I'm sure you'll be the second to know, because I'll be the first. Coming on nicely. Nice looking plant, wavy edges to the leaves. Yeah, nice root system. Yep, good little plant. Now these are my three mounted phalaenopsis that I need to get in the house. They're still out in the grow room at the moment. I mean, it went down below 15 out here last night. It's too cold for them. I don't like it. On an odd occasion, it's not going to kill the plant. Anyway, this is a mini phalaenopsis, so not that vigorous. I found all of my mini phalaenopsis are just not as vigorous. But it's grown some good roots recently, and a new leaf recently. So it's coming on. Uh, it's pulling itself together at long last. No name. And this one's also got no name. Um, this is, I'd class that as a midi. It's not a mini, but it's not a giant. It's so midi phalaenopsis. <laughs> Do you remember the skirts in the old days? Those of you who are old enough, you had mini skirts, and then you had midi skirts, and then you had the long ones. Well, that's, this is a midi phalaenopsis. It's produced some good roots recently. It's um, having a go at producing a new leaf. It's well attached. Roots heading round the back now. So, uh, yeah, it's growing on. It's okay. No worries, but no spikes, and until it blooms, I don't know which one it is in my notes. Apart from the fact it's the midi one on a mount. Now this one has got a name, this is Green Apple, or Green Apples. <laughs> so the, the tag's lost, it's wiped off. I'm not quite sure how it's done that with a marker pen but anyway this has got a mass of roots on it um, no worries about hydrating this one with a root mass like that it's currently pushing a spike out so we'll have some blooms on that one soon but I need to stop the plant getting so cold it's about to drop an old leaf that's natural it is its oldest leaf it may drop the next oldest one as well but it's produced some new ones and it's got a good root system so doing okay um, one of the few phalaenopsis I've got with a name now this dendrobium was bought as a very recent import um, and it had all its roots chopped off. This is Dendrobium anosmum and um, it had a sign of a new growth when I got it which has now done that. So I'm pleased with that. It's just starting to show signs that it may shed its leaves. Um, I mean it is a fully deciduous dendrobium and each year it grows new canes, dumps the leaves and then produces blooms on the um, on the bare stems. That's the way it works. But this one's just shot itself in the foot to a degree because I can't rest this one now because it's pushing out a new cane here and another one at the back of the plant. Um, little experiment on this one. I cut the rhizome and I was hoping that the tr the trigger mechanism in the orchid would be that it's damaged. So it tries to push growth out from behind the damaged part, which it's doing. It's not a strong growth, but it's only just started. But since I got it, it's grown a root system. So it's a successful, you know, import with no roots. And in a year I've got, you know, one good cane, another one pushing on nicely. Good new roots coming out of that as well. And another relatively recent shoot. I don't know whether that will bloom this spring or not. It might produce some, but probably not a mass blooming. But it's a recent plant. Let's grow the thing on and get a good plant, then we'll worry about blooms later. Now, early in, earlier in the year, I had some real problems with my telumnias. I had to unmount them all and give them a thorough clean-up. They were, they were just getting destroyed by scale. Um, I lost some, and some are in stages of recovery, some doing better than others. Um, this one I know has got no tag. I had two hybrids or two telumnias that got their tags muddled up. So this one needs to bloom to find out what the hell it is. But it's recovering. The, the, the leaves aren't desiccated anymore. And as you can see, tucked in there are new roots. So that one's going to make it fine. And that was always a small plant. Some telumnias are pretty big, but that's always been a miniature. But it's now growing and it has new roots. It's made it. This one, however, may not. It's just attempted to put a spike up, which was a bit stupid, and it's failed, which is what I was expecting. This one still has virtually no roots. You can see the leaves are desiccated. They're not plump. They're not open properly. It's not doing well. 
but it's not dead yet so I hang on to it and that's a uh, Jarek Flyer Red Butterfly maybe one day that run really isn't doing well at all but it's not dead yet <laughs> that's my expression this one however is picking up nicely this is another Jarak flyer black magic anything with that Jarak name in it comes from a French nursery sort of uh, a lot of their own hybrids there um, it's coming on the latest fan is growing and it is producing a new root system so although the older fans are not totally desiccated, they've still got some plumpness there. Without roots, they'd have soon desiccated. So it's coming on. That one's recovering. And it may well bloom on that latest new growth. They bloom at very young ages. I've seen Tolumnias bloom on a single fan separated from a larger plant, put out some roots and promptly chucked up a spike. They can bloom at a very early stage. So that's those three. Filmed together because they live in the same place, that's all. Now some of these long cane dendrobiums are difficult to film the whole plant. I mean, th this plant is over a metre from top to bottom, heading up towards, well, it's more than a metre, basically. It's got this big long cane that's still actively growing, and it has been growing for over a year. It's yet to go deciduous at the growing end, but this bit has. These are the old canes. This has only ever bloomed once for me, but recently it's pu pushed up a nice new cane. That's the bit I've been waiting for because it had an incredibly poor root system. But w with the advent of a new cane, we now have a shed load of new roots. So a plant that I thought wasn't doing very well at all is picking up, Dendrobium primulinum. Now this one I can just about get in shot all in one go. This is Dendrobium nesta, which is an anosmum cross. Um, it grew a single cane last year, which bloomed over the entire length. Quite a spectacle. Um, this year we've got three canes. Um, they're not as long as the previous one, and this one has finished growing. This one is still growing and then there's a smaller one tucked away behind which is probably still growing as well yeah that's still growing so three canes this time hopefully blooms on all of them it's pushed out a good root system during the year to go with the new canes that's their progression and um, we'll see how that one does uh, it's a good plant I love this plant blooms are stunning um, deep magenta with an even deeper center highly fragrant and last a reasonable amount of time. I think I get about four weeks out of the blooms, but um, yeah, large plant doing well. And this is, um, apart from Vandalus seedlings, out of my adult Vandas, this one hasn't bloomed this year. It bloomed for the first time for me last year and um, it didn't bloom this year, but I can't say it isn't growing this year. You know, it's, it's put on some good, strong, healthy new leaves, but no bloom this year. Um, massa roots, <laughs> absolute massa roots, that only just goes in the bucket. It's got a name about eight foot long. It's a hybrid between a, an Ascascender and a Vanda, and a lot of the Ascascenders are now Vandas anyway, but it's got a strange name. Um, yeah, you can probably read that. Um, yeah, so coming on well. It's a good plant, um, but this one is my reluctant Vanda bloomer for the adults. You know, it's a it's a big plant. I mean, that's got to be at least two thirds of a meter in span. You know, its actual width, um, height wise, it's about a meter from top to bottom. It's a big plant, so um, certainly strong and healthy. Well, this is Dendrobium senile or senile, named after its grey hairs, absolutely smothered in it. The previous plant I had was nicknamed the tarantula, because they look like tarantula legs. <laughs> it's just the way the previous plant was shaped, but I lost that one. Um, this was bought at Malvern, so middle of this year, and it turned out to be lots of little pieces. Well, most of the little pieces are now growing and producing roots and new growths. So it's picked up incredibly well in the amount of time I've had it. So I'm very pleased with its progress. I don't expect it to bloom in the spring, but who knows? 
We'll just have to wait and see. I'm just pleased that it's growing well and it's producing roots. So it's setting itself up, you know. Um, it may well have to have another season before it uh, blooms. But we'll wait and see. It's growing well. That's the important thing. And as a replacement, it's just one of those plants I had. I lost it and I thought, well, as soon as I see another one, I shall get it because I like it. I'd keep this one just for the plant. It's just different. Nice one. Well, this is my Brassavola nodosa. And for some reason, I'm looking at this differently. And at this point in time, this plant is just not growing as well as many others I've seen around the YouTube channels. Um, okay, it was set back badly by dropping it earlier this year and breaking the two leads. It's since shot out sideways from, from the damaged area. But those are now its only two new growths. That's not many. I've seen plants pushing out, you know, 10, 15, even 20 new growths. OK, they started bigger than this one, but I think I may try this in a pot. Undecided, but um, it's growing, it's just not doing what I would call brilliantly. These can be, in the right situation, incredibly vigorous, pushing up new growths and roots all over the place. This one isn't. It's not dead, but it's not doing as well as it ought to be. So I need to have a think about that one. And being critical on my other Brassavola, this one's not perhaps doing as well as it ought to. This is a non-bloomer. It's a hybrid, David Sanders. And, um, OK, it's got three nice new growths pushing on. And it's regenerating its root system, because I nearly lost the whole flipping plant earlier in the year. Um, it started to rot, basically. I had to, I had to just take off what I could and rescue it. So as a rescue plant, I suppose it's not doing too bad. But never bloomed. So we'll see what those three new growths do. Um, you know, they're pushing on nicely. The leaves haven't opened yet, but um, they're progressing and it is growing a root system. I'll have to keep my eye on that one. Now this what looks like a giant cattleya isn't. It's actually three pieces rescued from a very big plant that was failing badly and it was probably infected. I didn't get a 100% confirmation but I was pretty sure. So it's had treatment and it is now growing good strong new growths like this one down here. It's even got a sheath on it. Um, there's another good one coming out somewhere. There's one down the bottom there. Um, but it's a conundrum because it's never going to look a good plant. Um, yeah, there's another nice strong new growth coming out there. This piece on the end doesn't look too clever. But uh, the choice I've got really is to just leave it and let it grow. In which case, you know, it'll eventually be so attached that it couldn't possibly come off. Or I take the bull by the horns and take the leads off that are clean with their roots and stick those in a holy clay pot and start it again. But if I do that, what I would do is the remainder of the plant will just stay on the mount because it might shoot out again. But the oldest part of the plant is never going to look good. These leaves are never going to recover. They're far too far gone and their associated pseudobulbs are just going to sit there looking tatty forevermore. Um, whereas I could be getting some nice new plantlets growing with roots in a holy clay pot where, where I'm sure they'd probably do a lot better. So a decision to be made, not now, but somewhere down the line, I think I might have to take the leads off and either discard the oldest part of the plant. That's Rose Pixie Pinafore. It has lovely blooms, if I ever get any. I mean, this, this growth has got a good strong sheath on it. It might bloom. We shall see. But it's an awarded plant. American Orchid Society gave this one an award when it was uh, first presented. So I don't want to lose it, but it just looks a mess. It could look better. And I think it might need that new start in life to get it going again. It's one of these that hasn't made its mind up, because that growth which isn't that old, that's quite a new growth, has decided to put up two leaves. So it doesn't know yet whether it's a bifolia or just has one leaf per pseudobulb. I've got quite a few cattleyas that do that. 
Anyway, a decision to be made down the line, but that's the state of play at the moment. Some strong new growth, some good root activity. So I would suggest it's recovered, but the oldest part of the plant never will. And I've either got to sit and look at the oldest part of the plant and begrudge it, or just deal with it. Um, you can tell by my voice I've virtually made me mind up just talking about it. But not now, I've got other things to do. This is the rest of the Tolumnias now, um, in various stages of recovery, including not recovering at all well. I don't know whether that one's going to make it. It has got a single new fan pushing up in the centre, but if it doesn't get some roots out, it's not going to make it. Now that's another Jarek flyer, that's pink brush. It says pink bush on the tag, but it is actually pink brush. I'm not sure that one's going to make it. We shall see. This one is Tolumnia Peach, one of my favourites. And this one wasn't as far gone when I had to rescue the whole flipping set, because they, they just got eaten by scale and just took out the base of the um, plants, basically, just ate the leaves off of the short little rhizomes. Um, but it is recovering and it is doing a good root system again. So that's on the mend. That one will be okay. Um, I'll do this one at the same time because I bought them from the same place. So they go together. This is Tolumnia Oriental Pear. Beautiful blooms if it ever does. This is borderline getting going again. And um, the reason why they failed is still there. Look on the back of that leaf. That's the reason why I lost my Tolumnias. They're still there. They just have a little go every now and again. There's adults there as well as the fluffy white ones. The fluffy white ones can get about a bit. They're quite mobile. They will spread from plant to plant, especially if they're touching. It's the adults that are the breeders, though. So that one's got to be dealt with again. It's like a never-ending battle. And it's a shame. That was a good plant once. <coughs> so actually, that can go separate. Throw it on the floor in disgust. That one's got it. Chances are there's a few lurking on some of the others as well, so they'll all have to get a good... Yeah, I can see a couple of adults on that one. Um, this one is Sunset Pink, and this one is recovering reasonably well, but it's going to have its recovery set back if the scale get going again. So uh, I think I'm going to have to seriously spray today. And if the plants go into the night time a bit damp, so be it. That's the least of their worries. If I don't deal with this, it will get out of hand again. Fast. And as you can see, there are some adults there. Oh, virtually indestructible, these flipping things. Um, did I do that one? No, I didn't. That one is my only species, Tolumnia. Europhila. I actually got a culture award at Malvern two years ago gone downhill since then, but it's recovering nicely this one. The new fans look strong, the new roots look strong. So this one is on the mend, but I've got to stop it becoming a victim. So uh, yeah, Tolumnia's scale battle not finished, you know, and with this number of plants, if every single one is not dead, they will come back. I've just got to keep on top of them. It's a battle, um, that I thought I'd won. But, to be honest, I've been slack with the systemic spray. Um, they, the whole plant room hasn't had a treatment for some time now because I thought I was on top of everything and I didn't need to. Well, obviously I'm not and I do need to. So I'm going to have to do that. Shame, but it's got to be done. I thought I'd just go and check my records. Um, the last spike on this, the first bloom opened on the 1st of May. I took the spike off on the 5th of September. <laughs> that is value for money. I didn't think van der Blooms lasted that long, but this one does. They don't all, but this one lasts ages. And because it opens in a progression, obviously these buds are embryo buds. And this one's just opened, so by the time this one's finished, these will probably still be maturing and not even open yet. So it's in for a very long spell of uh, quite good blooms. 
This one is Dendrobium fleckery. Fleckery? Yes, fleckery, one eye. And it's an Australian native, so this is one of the Aussies. But you can sort of see, it's got a little bit of the look of a Kingianum about it. It's got that style, hasn't it? Um, but anyway, this has bloomed once with a single bloom. Um, it's the tallest cane on the left there is its latest growth. It does look like it may bloom off of that one. And it's got a lovely strong new growth just pushed up from the back there. Um, the leaves yet to open. So I haven't had it long, but it's progressing nicely. It's coming on. That should grow into a nice clump. Um, yeah, coming on nicely. It's pushed out a lot of roots um, with that latest growth that may bloom soon. So uh, it's got a good root system now and it's continuing to push out growths. Doing okay. Lovely bloom. And this has got a strange name. Um, Rodwigwesia liana. Um, present from Rachel as a very young plant. Um, I've grown two new bulbs, uh, the one at the top to the right and the latest one hanging down here, the shiny green one. Masses of roots on this thing. Um, having seen adult plants of this, it does like aerial roots, it does do that. That just tells me it comes from an area with very high humidity to be able to get away with mostly aerial roots. I really want to get this in a pot, but I will lose so many roots to do that. So what I might do is, um, come the spring when it starts into growth again, I might add some moss to parts of the mount where it's bare and just give it a bit more. I mean, it's, it's even got a mass of roots around the back. Um, but it's growing, it's coming on. Um, I still think that's far too young to bloom yet, probably another year, maybe two. But it's coming on, it's growing, and now it's going to rain again. Now this is a strange looking orchid, it looks like some sort of hybrid between a Bulbophyllum and a Cilogeny. Um, it has crinkly bulbs naturally, um, single leaf per bulb, as you can see, and the unfortunate side of this plant is it was mounted in the middle of the mount, and it's set off in two directions, and very shortly it's going to be hanging off the end of this tiny little mount. Um, easy way around that could be just to put it on another mount, a bigger one, and tie this mount onto it and let it extend. But it hasn't got there yet. <laughs> I'll worry about that at the appropriate time. It's pushed out a lot of new roots, and each new growth is at either end. Um, they are larger than previous growths. That's progression. Nice leaves. Nice dark leaves on this and it's doing something there now whether that's another new growth or a spike I haven't got a clue that's another non-bloomer bought as a young plant and it's got a strange name to go with the strange look it's a Bifrenaria and it's Harrisonae EIE you could get away with either putting two eyes on the end, one eye on the end, or an AE on the end. But no, let's be clever and put IAE on the end. Oh, who thinks this stuff up? Anyway, it's coming on, it's growing, but uh, no blooms as yet. Now this one's an Epidendrum. This is Epidendrum Nocturnum. Um, was bought as a very, very young plant, and I didn't expect anything from it for some time. And, yes, my expectations were achieved, because it hasn't done anything. <laughs> but what it has done is pushed out a very good root system. It's still doing that now. Um, the oldest cane is that short one in the middle there. Well, there's actually a little one hanging off the side, but um, I think that was the young growth I had when I got it. It then grew this cane. Um, the new leaves got totally flipping eaten as they were emerging, so they're permanently damaged. That has got a spike on it. Now it's had a spike on it for about a year. And the oldest part of that spike has aborted. But it seems to be having another go. But I don't know what this is supposed to do. So I'm just watching and waiting. But recently it's put, put up this nice new cane as well. Which is bigger than the previous one. And if that one's capable of blooming, there's no reason why that one shouldn't. So it's a strange looking plant. It's... um. To say it's an epidendrum, although chances are if I go for a coffee the name will change, but last I looked, Epidendrum nocturnum. Well, this is my only Tolumnia in bloom at the moment, and it's currently blooming off a branch off of the main um, stem. 
Don't cut your stems onto lumnias. Still got some buds to open there. It's got another spike pushing on there. Recent acquisition, and it's got lots of gold in the name, and I've forgotten what it is. It's something like um, Golden Sunray or Golden Sunray Sunshine, something like that. But it's a lovely plant. It is pushing some new roots out. It's got new fans on the go, and um, is blooming on the latest two fans. So uh, yeah, it's a nice little plant. As I say, recent acquisition. Filmed separately because it lives in a separate place. It's in bloom and I want to see it. So it's not up in the roof at the moment. Now this one is Epidendrum polybulbin and it's had a name change. I think it's Dinema now. Um, growing well, non bloomer so far, but looking at the apex of some of these new growths, it does look like it's pushing some spikes. So maybe we'll. See what the blooms look like. Non-bloomer so far. It grows well, but it's a rambler. Um, doesn't lend itself to being stuck in a pot. It'll just climb out at the end of the day. So I thought I'll stick it on a mount and it can, it can clamber. It attaches well and it's growing well. The older part of the plant down the bottom um, is not shooting out at the moment. So that's obviously probably doomed you know, to die back. But what I may do is, as some of these um, extensions push out into the air with roots, I could break some of those off and replant them down the bottom of the mount to fill it out again. So it has the potential to, uh, to fill in to quite a nice plant. It's growing well, and hopefully it looks like it's going to bloom soon. We'll have to wait and see. Um, hold your breath. <laughs> Now obviously filming vandas that are over a metre long including their roots, <laughs> I can't get them in shot. But what we can do is start at the bottom, we can have a look at a, what is a good root system and it's progressed a lot this year. Oldest part of the plant, leaves a little tatty, those I got. Um, I haven't grown those. Um, this is about from here, this is my part of the plant. And this blooms three times a year, so no ID. Um, Originally it would have been an Ascus sender, um, but most of the Ascus centrums have now been reclassified as Vandas. So I'm quite happy that it's a no ID Vanda. Beautiful blooms, three times a year. What more can you want from a Vanda? Lovely depth of colour, lovely dense spikes, and it grows well. I mean, this pushes up five or six new leaves a year. It's pushing on well. Very, very pleased with that one. And this is my Oncidium Tiny Twinkle. <clears throat> it's never going to get much bigger than that. Lovely little dwarf Oncidium for those who uh, haven't got much space. The blooms are small as well, but they're fragrant and produced in profusion. Currently got three spikes. This was nearly a lost plant. It nearly got thrown out. And I thought I'll try it on a mount. And since then, it's grown. And it's doing okay. So, uh, as I say, not all of my mounted orchids are dendrobiums. There is quite an assortment. That, that one's taken to its mount. It's produced good roots, the new growths are blooming, and they're certainly larger than previous growths. So it's coming on nicely, that one. Nice little plant. Now these are nice, two nice miniature dendrobiums, which I call the squash grape plants, <laughs> because the pseudo bulbs just look like squash grapes to me. Um, now this is a species, this is Jenkinsii. This has bloomed once for me this spring for the first time. It only had two blooms and that's not much of a spike. It should produce more blooms per spike. But it did bloom for the first time. It's grown a lot of new growth this year. Um, still doing it, there's one sticking out the top. Lovely bronzy colour to the leaves when they first open. And the pseudo bulbs are plump. They don't stay like that. <laughs> this is what they look like. A lot of new growths out that end, quite a few down the bottom, and some up the top. The oldest part of the plant's dead center. That's what I got, you know, and it's grown outwards since then. That's its natural progression. I've got no plans on splitting that up. I'm just going to let it grow. It's got plenty more room on that mount yet. So Dendrobium jenkinsii. And the other one has got jenkinsii in it. It's actually a primary hybrid between Jenkinsii and Aggregatum. They are similar plants in size and look. This is still producing new growths at the moment. There's one up the back there, another one up the back, uh, one coming up there in the middle, 
and another new one just opening down the bottom. Now this was a very young plant when I got it, it's pushed on nicely this year. Whether it's big enough to flower, we'll have to wait and see. Um, if it's anything like it's a bigger brother down there, I might have to wait another year. But lovely root system on that, um, and good strong new growths. So it's progressing well even if it doesn't bloom in the spring. Now this is Dendrobium Lodigesii, or Jessii, depending on your preference. Um, done well this year, put on a lot of new growth. Um, I see no reason why I might not get some blooms on this next year, but we'll have to wait and see. But it is progressing well. Um, and it's just dawned on me, as I'm filming the mounted orchids, I feel as though I'm repeating myself. As a deja vu, as though I've just said the same words, because there's only so many words you can say about each plant. So, you, you know, and I think what it is, is not that long ago I did an update on my mounted orchids and it's still fresh in my mind. That's the only thing I can think of, because it really does feel as though I've said all this before. Anyway, coming on well, nice plant. Now, this is the real Dendrobium primulinum. I know I filmed a clip earlier with a plant that didn't have a tag and I called it Primulinum when in fact it's Glomeratum. So when that clip goes up it'll have to have a pop-up because I named it wrong. This is the real thing, Primulinum. A very worrying plant at the start of the year because um, the only new growth was that one and those leaves did not look good so I was a bit worried. But since then it's grown some nice new canes and um, it has pushed out some new roots to go with them. So it's coming on. That has bloomed for me once, and it was at least two years ago. So hopefully we'll get some blooms on these latest canes. Um, it's perked up quite well this year. As you could see, if that was your only cane, you wouldn't be happy, would you? And I wasn't. <laughs> now I'm happier, because it's pushed out another two good growths this year. So, coming on, maybe we'll get some blooms in the spring. Just wanted to come back to this um, Phalaenopsis. Um, I've only just noticed this, but it's, uh, I'd like to film it simply because it could cause a worry for some people. Um, this went to a show, and to get it there, and to get it to stand upright, I grabbed all of our pots in our displays after going to black pot. Obviously this is in a clear pot. So I put it in the black pot with a rock to make sure it stood upright. And I've just left it in there since then. Look what it's doing to the new root growth. Look at the colour. It's losing its coloration because it's in the dark. Phalaenopsis roots don't really like being in the dark. <laughs> so I need to find a clear pot and put a rock in the bottom. Um, or in actual fact, now the spike's gone, it doesn't even need to stand in a pot, it's fine. Um, so, But yeah, that's what happens to roots if they're in the dark on Phalaenopsis. This is their normal colour. Yeah, Even the tip on that one, where it's been growing in the dark, has just got that pale tinge to it. These will darken up and go to the, their normal colour once they get exposed to some light. So, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd show that little interesting point. Okay, that's the end of the end of season updates. Um, I've enjoyed doing these because it does give me a chance to give a, each plant a good look at, you know, uh, and have a little, little chat about each one. Um, I hope you've enjoyed them. Um, I've certainly enjoyed doing them. <coughs> Although some have thought that it might be a considerable effort to do these, they're not really. Um, you know, as each plant gets picked up to be watered, picking the camera up, bit of filming, bit of chat, put the camera down, carry on. It's not a big deal doing the filming, and I do enjoy my filming. Um, and then putting the clips together really doesn't take much, you know, I just sort of drag them into the software, make a big line, have a look at the time, and when it gets up near 30 minutes, I stop. And then I just put a bit on the front, a bit on the back, and away you go. It really doesn't take a huge amount of time. But um, now that these have come to an end, I've got to think up some more <laughs> ideas for videos. Some things happen naturally, you know, new blooms opening, stuff like that. But um, any ideas for videos are more than welcome. They will all be considered. Some may not be practical, but um, 
you know, under normal circumstances, a good suggestion for a video, I'll take it up. So keep your suggestions coming, and um, thanks for all your comments on these, and uh, I'll, I'll see you in whatever the next video is. <laughs> Bye for now.